everybody, my next guest might be the son of a Hall of Famer, but he's making his own name, turning heads in his uh, draft journey. His draft stock is going up. It's shooting up to the sky, everybody. A second team, all Pac-12 selection from USC, who led the team in receiving touchdowns last year, number two on the field, number one in our hearts, I hear. Brendan Rice, how are you? Good morning. I'm well, how are you? I'm so good. How you feeling? How you living? What's your day like? Uh, I'm just happy. It's another day. You get to go out there and be just dominant. Uh, got a couple workouts, a couple interviews going through. So, you know, take it step by step. Yeah, what'd you dominate today, Rice? Uh, I woke up this morning, made my bed. If you can go ahead and make your bed every morning, amen. <laughs> I did not make my bed this morning, so you are ahead of me. I cannot believe we're a week away from the draft. Finally, Brendan, a week away. Yeah, it's wild. Uh, this draft has been a roller coaster up and down. So many things to attend. Um, and then you got interviews, and you have to really apply yourself each and every day, like when going up to these coaches so they can get to know you. It's pivotal, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, is there a draft day sweater in your closet waiting to make an appearance? Because let's look at these. What what, what do you got? Ooh, a draft day sweater. Uh, I'm going to have something cooking up in my closet for sure, but I don't know if it's going to be a draft day sweater. This is a, a good look. Of course, Detroit cold. A lot of NFL cities are uh, frigid, so you'll get good use out of your uh, wardrobe there, which we love. But um, let's get to some football here. You have this insane season, breakout, four touchdowns your junior year at USC, 12 touchdowns your senior year, you led the team. What happened? What was the moment? What was the biggest reason for the jump in production in your eyes? I took it upon myself and with Caleb as well, just to build that chemistry. Our first year, we were kind of bunched up together. We had a whole lot of transfer players. So I never really got to know, like, know my actual quarterback. Uh, throughout that offseason of the second year, me and Caleb ended up taking that next step, putting in the work each and every day, and really just hanging out more. So once that connection really built, it was about just going out on the field and making it happen. Your connection with Caleb, undeniable. Part of that, you shout him out in that answer right there. What's he made of? What do you want me to know about Caleb Williams? That dude right there, man, he got some real cojones. Okay. <laughs> I would have to say, uh, he he takes it to the next level. Um, just who he is as a character aspect to his teammates. And each and every day, he's going to put in the necessary work just to make himself better and make those around him better. He's going to apply pressure to you and ask you to do certain things so you can take that next level, that next jump. And some guys fall. Some guys are going to rise to the equation. And he sets the standard so high for others as well as himself that you want to be better for him. Mm. What are you going to miss most about him? Uh, you know, just uh, seeing a play break down and him climbing out that po uh, that pocket and me having to go find, uh, you know, like our uh, scramble rules and our dynamic and making sure I get open so he can just chuck it down to me six yards downfield. <laughs> yeah. How did you make Caleb a better quarterback? I would have to say I stayed attentive at all times. So if I was, we're going to go back to the scramble rules, like if I was to see our sound field and I saw him like in the indications that he's about to roll out, uh, I would just go ahead and react to it a little mm -hmm. bit quicker. So I would just get open, uh, make his life a little bit easier. And that's how I was able to go ahead and take the next leap for touchdowns at least. When you see the things that are sort of uh, said about him that are create like just what what does it make you feel when you see anything that's out there that doesn't link up or sort of sync up with what you know of this person and this player? Just the character aspect. Um, people are going to say a couple things here and there, and you know this is this is a world that people don't like little things that he does, but. He's going to carry his head strong. So every single day, I believe that he will still be who he is. He's going to stay true to that, and he's going to stay true to his teammates. I love to hear that. Now, you have this, you're helpful to him. You're going to be helpful to whoever your quarterback is in the <laughs> NFL because you've got this big play potential. A third of your touchdowns in college went for 30 or more yards. A third, 33%. Mm -hmm. Four of those were 60 plus yarders. I like to hear that. You averaged 17.6 yards per reception last season. What is the key, the code, the cheek, whatever you want to call it? What is the answer to getting behind these DBs so consistently? 
It's a lot of film work, uh, a lot of studying with coach, uh, going over the game plan, learning what their coverages are, and taking that game to the aspect. You go ahead and slow down that game, then shoot, you can go ahead and just destroy defenses and really realize the details, the nuances of what it takes to get behind all those DBs to go ahead and find those little holes within the defense. Mm. You pride yourself on work ethic. You're talking film, the whole thing. You have a tattoo that says success is not inherited. It's mm -hmm. earned. Uh, is that your superpower? And if not, what is? is? Is work ethic what makes you as good as you are? Or what are we missing? Work ethic is just it's the foundation. Uh, it's what my dad prided himself on, and it's what I took upon myself because if you, you can't go in this uh, league without work ethic. If you want to play 10, 20 years, which is unheard of, you got to go ahead and beat out the you have to beat out the odds as is. So work ethic each and every day, taking care of your body, making sure you're in that film room, and just being attentive to your coaches, making sure that you take down the details each and every day. Um, I wasn't going to ask. I thought about not asking about your dad because I feel like every interview is asking about your dad, but you, but you brought him up. So is that fair game? Can I ask about him? It's fair game. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's your relationship with that? I'm sure, I mean, it helped. it's an advantage. I mean, even, even in the work ethic way, the getting prepared for this draft process your way, uh, it's an advantage. Is there, is there a, not a, I don't want to say disadvantage, but like what's the biggest challenge of having Jerry Rice be your dad? in this process? Uh, I would say there is really no challenge. Uh, people are going to say, oh, you feel the pressure and, and this and that, but like pressure is a privilege. You have to be here and be in the moment and be thankful to have a last name such as Rice. Just somebody who was so uh, just positive to his community, never really got in trouble. And he was always just praise, uh, getting praise and uh, just promoted his work ethic and being humble and all these little things that you really want to see in a role model. Um, I love to hear that. You talk about his influence on you a lot. I listened to a lot of interviews, so did my producer, Tierra, and how eloquently you speak about that relationship, how he drives you. But we were curious, what is something that you school your dad on? Like, what's something uh, you influence him on? Influence him on? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good question. I would have to say, man, I... I really, it's really hard to go ahead and teach that man uh, <laughs> anything. Music, TikTok, technology, sweaters, what, anything, anything you were like, dad, you gotta, you, let me get this right. Oh my goodness, I would have to definitely say like the way he takes pictures on Instagram. <laughs> like, <laughs> Wait, what do you mean I'm gonna look? His Instagram? His Instagram, like the way he takes pictures or the way he types in go to emoji, go to emoji, go to emoji. I'm like, Pops, we know you need to go, but you don't have to do that every single time. You think like, he's doing too much? <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> How many, what does he say when you say, Dad, maybe not seven go to emojis, maybe just three? What does he say? He's like, Man, good morning, goat. Anything. Anything, literally, yes. <laughs> Talk to me. What do you want to say? Dad, Dad, this is how I feel about your photos. Man, he's always open. If you guys can see the Seven Eleven chain, always open. Hey, look. <laughs> like, I like, Pops, yeah. why, are you, why are you taking that picture, man? Like, and posting that. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite. Oh. This is my favorite interview ever. This is absolutely amazing. How many goat emojis? What What would be if, in your ideal world? Does he use like one a picture, one a week? Are we Are we getting rid of the goat emoji entirely? Oh, so every conversation that he texts me, like, good morning, goat, or what's up, goat? How you doing, goat? And I'm like, and it'll be goat emoji, goat emoji, goat emoji, and then fire, fire, fire. And I'm like, There's a phrase. It's called smoke him if you got him. And, like, he's the goat. What do you want him to do? Shoot. Um, who's the coolest person you've gotten to meet because of your dad? Just being, like, who's the person whose presence you're, that you're like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I just met that person? Or does it just not bother you at all? <sighs> Uh, it's become pretty normal, actually. I would not say, like, anybody's, like, in particular. Like, no, like, have you met Tom Brady? Like, that doesn't do anything for you? Okay, okay. If I met Tom Brady, that'd be different. Oh, you haven't <laughs> have met him? Met, no. Okay, I'd like to see that happen. Your dad oh, gets... Sorry. Your, your, Excuse me, Joe Montana. Oh, that's a good... You know, I'd no, say that that's, was a big one. Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty good one. Um, when we talk about goats, though, I think we got to talk about your mom, Jackie. Okay. October ever, October 19th, 2019, you post this photo on Instagram. The caption is, a couple of years, a mama going to be set for life. 
Can you believe you're a week away from, I mean, this was five years ago that you're posting this, and here it is. Let's, let's give your mom some love. Most definitely. That's a strong woman, man, and just the strength that she imposed on me. It's taken me a ways afar. She had a whole impact on me, a, work, a great positive figure within my life, a great role model. And shoot, I've seen her power through so much adversity and just come out the fire even stronger. We'd love to hear that. Uh, and shout out to your mom, Jackie. And like, you are a week away and it's his absolute dream. It's amazing that it's worked out for, the, for you. And I can't wait to see where you go. And as you said, success not inherited, it's earned. So we can talk about everybody else, all we want, Caleb, your parents, everything. But like, you put in the work and you did that. And I think any NFL team uh, will be lucky to have you. Now you have had some visits. Jim Harbaugh, what was that like? <laughs> He's crazy. What was, that, what was that interview with Jim like? Were you in oh, the Jim. RV, Brendan? Oh, no, I was not in the RV. But I've met Jim Harbaugh a couple times before. So, like, I already know the type of, uh, his type of energy and uh, what he brings to the game. I was recruited to Michigan, and he was just an upbeat person, an upbeat personality. But, like, what he brings to the game of football, like, you have to go ahead and admire who he is and understand, like, hey, just so y'all know, like, if you're a real football geek, not everybody's going to think you're, like, cool like that. You're going to be invested in the game at all times, and it's going to take it to another level. Playing with Justin Herbert would be pretty cool, huh? That arm? Oh, Ooh. most definitely. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Are you an L.A. guy? Because I heard recently that you said uh, that football on the East Coast might be a little bit better. What are you trying to say, Brendan? Whoa, 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 whoa. When did I ever say that? Oh, I don't know. That's what my producer told me. I think that that's true. I don't know. Sorry? <sighs> They're telling me. I'm Keyshawn's podcast. I never said that. He never said that. Fake news. Uh, didn't, didn't I, I happen. I would like to go ahead and see that one. Okay, that I didn't said happen. I made a mistake. West Coast football is the best coast football. West Coast. Oh, because now we're doing the opposite. I think that's what you should do. You should say everything's the I love the Midwest. That's what you should say on your next interview. The best place Most to play definitely. football is in, you know, in the Midwest with Caleb and everybody and company in Chicago, hopefully. Um, okay, well, this was absolutely amazing to get to meet you. Uh, and you're going to be an absolute star. Is there anything that you want? people out there that might see this to, to like, is there something that we aren't talking about about your game? I feel like I uh, hyped you up, but like, what, am I missing something? <laughs> uh, no, honestly, I think you really took it to another level for me, and I'm thankful <laughs> for that. That's right. Sorry, I just pretended to make up something about you liking the, the I, I, I was going to ask you about the Panthers and trying to play with Bryce. Oh, Panthers would be amazing. I mean, sure, to play with Bryce. And then I, the coaching staff, they're like, one of the coaches are family friends of mine, so it would just be amazing. Plus, Who's, another coach. Who is that? Who's the family friend? Moore. Okay. Coach Moore. And then uh, you also have somebody that came over from USC that's on the Panthers staff, as is right now. So, now, when you, hey. you had a meeting with them, right? I already did. Was, was Mr. Tepper in that meeting? Excuse me, one more time? Was Mr. Tepper the owner in that meeting? <laughs> You don't know? I'm not going to say. Okay, I'm curious. Oh, I'm not going to say that You're one. You're not going to say. So that's a, that's a yes, but, but, but okay, we love that. Um, but, but you know the receivers coach. I did, I did not connect. Usually I connect those things. I did not know that. Um, that'd be beautiful to see. I was just visiting um, with them, and, and I got to sit with Coach Dave and Mr. Tepper, and I was just blown away. Um, I didn't know Dave Canales before then, and, and I got it when I sat with him, um, what his vibes are. Intense. He's an intense, direct guy. Sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> you gotta love it though. Yeah, you gotta love it wherever you wherever you play. Brendan, with a shout out to his family. No more goat emojis. Look, I learned something. Brendan Rice, uh, good luck and enjoy every moment. Thank you, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm.